Hey PPLD makers, my name's Jennifer, and today I'm here with my good friend, an amazing artist and illustrator, Kels Chu. Hi. And today we're going to talk about zines. We'll cover a little bit about what, what they are, why you might want to make one, and some basics for getting started. Thanks so much for joining us, Kelsey. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. So can you tell us a little bit about what zines are and why they're important? Sure. Um, so zines are basically self-published books. They can take many different forms. Um, and they're really great because they can be about any kind of topic you want. It can be poetry, it could be prose, it could be articles, or it could just be comics or anything fun like illustrations. Uh, photography, you know, they can be really informational where it's like talking about a specific topic like activism or it can just be about like your dog. So Amazing. they're really fun as a way to express yourself and share information. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. Um, and so how did you get started making zines? Um, so I always liked drawing and making comics from, you know, when I was a kid like most comic makers. Um, and I didn't really find out about zines until I was in college. And one of my classes took me to Quimby's, which is this amazing indie bookshop in Chicago where I went to school. And I was like, you could just print them and share them because I really only knew about web comics at that time. I was like, do I really want to like be posting stuff all the time? Like I always really liked things in print better. So it was like amazing to find out, oh my God, I can just print it and share it. You know, it doesn't have to be like very like finished looking. It can just be like a printout and people want to read it. So, which was amazing for me to find out. So I kind of started making zines. Well, first I made some in class, like some of my science classes. Um, one of these was my first, my second zine ever was about, um, Hawaiian honey creepers, which is a group of birds in Hawaii that are really endangered. So I made that in one of my science classes and then another one about insects. So that's kind of how I started making zines. Nice. Can you yeah. show us some other examples of your work and maybe tell us a little more about your process? Sure. Um, so I mostly like doing comics and narrative comics. So I have a whole bunch of, uh, this is a lot of my stuff that I make. Um, so some of my earlier ones were just like short little short story comics. Um, and these are ones that I made for like Chicago Zine Fest and Cake. Um, and then some other little short narrative ones here. Um, some of my more recent stuff. Uh, this one was like my attempt at like, uh, experimental or abstract sorts of comics, which I was not good at in school. <laughs> um, this one I really like because it's printed in risograph as well, which is like a really cool printing process. It's similar to screen printing in that uh, each layer is a separate color. Um, and there's like a lot of cool stuff that happens with the registration and color layering. Um, but it's printed through like an actual normal print. Well, not normal printer, it's a specific kind of printer, but it's like digital and then it comes out of a printer. So it's a lot faster than screen printing, but it has a similar feel and look, which is really cool. Um, let's see, that's my other, these are some of my longer-ish narrative comics. So this one I did, uh, this one is kind of more recent, well, 2018. And I did it for uh, an anthology uh, called Group Chat, which is really cool. It was all just like comics about friendship, which was really cute. Um, and this was kind of one of my first narrative longer ones that I did after I graduated, because I was like, I, I just want to see how long it takes to make, like, you know, without any page limits and things like that. Um, so that was a fun process, but it took me a couple months to finish that. Um, and then some of my more recent ones are just like illustration ones where it's just short little sketchbook illustrations kind of, yeah, with some written things, but, and 
this one is about like Hawaii food, which made me very hungry making it. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me very hungry um, reading it, too. Yeah. So, yeah. so that one was really hard to do because I got insanely hungry <laughs> every time I worked on it. Um, so that's kind of some of the ones that I do. I usually, when I'm making a comic or a zine, I kind of tend to draw out the layout first, like in thumbnails, like quick sketches, and then I'll kind of write as I'm thumbnailing it out, and then I'll start working on a first draft and then sometimes a second draft and then you know scanning formatting printing all that awesome yeah oh well, thank you and you brought a bunch of other really great examples for us to see by other artists yeah did you want to walk us through some of these as well sure so it was really hard to pick just like a few favorites so as you can see I brought many um some of these ones are really cool because it's like completely different forms than you would think of for a book so this one is like a little trash can and it's called i forget what it's called but it's basically like a little poem poem about trash i guess <laughs> um and then so there's lots of different ways that you can find things like this is a long accordion book and it's just a beautiful painting inside um, this is another really cute accordion one that's also cut as well, like and it's one. got a little a little diaper to hold it. To. <laughs> so clever. Yeah. Um, and then this one is really cool where it's double sided, and the stories meet in the middle, and it's basically a little flip book, like, which is awesome. Yeah, so that's some of the different forms that zines can take and they can be bound in a lot of different ways as well like a lot of them are just let's see just stapled on the edge like uh, what's that saddle saddleback stitch yeah. <laughs> um or like you can staple it this way um let's see you can use like different little connector Things. This one is a great scene about how being creative is similar to pooping, which <laughs> is very amazing. Yes. <laughs> and there's a lot of different things you can put in the zine. So I'm very drawn to comics and art zines, obviously. So I have like a lot of comics. Like these ones are beautiful narrative comics. Um, so this one is Rosemary Valero O'Connell. Oh my god, their art is gorgeous. I also like a lot of just like weird, silly ones. So this is the pooping one. This one is about like if Harry Potter made a zine, which is freaking hilarious. Um, this one is really great. Yeah, and then uh, this one I really like. It's just a collection of different artists who drew like the first 151 like original Pokemon from memory so like they don't some of them look like the original ones it's like okay you were very into Pokemon and then some of them don't look anything like them at all and it's just super cute and then some of them I like that are just really they're just really pretty conceptually like uh this one is just a compilation of the inside of envelopes which you would never like the patterns that are inside security envelopes which you never really think to look at which is really pretty and like it feels really nice too nice <laughs> this one is like places that they felt were like photography zine of like places that felt very powerful to them which was beautiful. I think this might, might have been on the trip or something. Well, this is an amazing collection, and thank you so much for sharing it with us. Yeah. I have a couple other examples here as well. Um, Kelsey and I ran a couple workshops at some libraries a couple years ago, yeah. um, and we made some collaborative zines during those workshops. Yeah. So these are fun because um, every page was done by a different artist that showed up to our workshop, mm -hmm. um, people who maybe hadn't even really made a zine before. Um, so it's really fun to do some collaborative work like this as well sometimes um, with either a group of friends or a group of strangers in our case. Um, and 
A couple of my favorite zines. I actually brought one of yours, the, oh. the Halloween zine. It's a little tiny mini zine with um, a bunch of really cute Halloween illustrations inside of it. Um, and you actually gave this out to trick-or-treaters one year, right? Yeah. So they got like a half-sized version of it. Which I think is a really great idea for getting your yeah. work out. Lots of little presents for people. Exactly, <laughs> yes. Um, and I'm a big fan of collage zines as well. And this is one of my favorites. It has this cute picture of a cat and like some milk on the front of it um but it has some like longer more narrative writing in it but it's also um published in the same same book as a bunch of nice collages mm -hmm. that have interesting and thought-provoking phrases on them as well yeah. um so that's one of my favorites and then um another one from a, a local colorado zinester um is this, this 3d so zine cool. which it actually comes with a pair of 3d glasses and these photos are all printed so that they will look 3D when you put the glasses on, which is just yeah. really genius. There's really so fun. much you can do with these. Mm -hmm. Like every time I see a new one, it's just like, I never thought of doing that, you know? And so the really fun thing about zines is that they can really be anything. So thanks again for Sky's sharing all it. these with us. <laughs> yeah, and Kelsey also made this really awesome mini zine that tells you actually how to fold a zine that looks just like this one. So. If you unfold it, there are instructions on the inside about how, how to, to fold, fold this the zine. Basic mini zine. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And we will put a copy of this that you can download in the description of the video. Um, but we'll also go ahead and take some time now to walk you through how to fold this zine. So to start folding your mini zine, you'll want to fold your piece of paper the long way, or what we'll call hot dog style. If that's familiar to you, sometimes people don't know what that means but it's the long way of the paper. All right, then you'll unfold it uh, and fold it again the opposite way or what we'll call hamburger style, if that makes sense. So now you'll unfold the paper again and then fold the short edges in toward the center fold that you just made. All right, and then you'll unfold it again and you'll see that you have kind of the eight pages of the mini zine folded out. And so then what we'll do is we'll refold the hamburger fold, so the short way. And we'll take a pair of scissors and cut from the middle to the halfway point. So you'll then unfold everything again, refold the long way, and push the ends in towards the center which creates the pages of your zine. And you can fold it and get it all straightened and flattened out. And it'll be ready for you to read in this case, or if it's a blank piece of paper, cover with your own message. <laughs> Beautiful. So this is only one way to make a zine, as you've seen from all of these amazing examples, but it's a great way to get started. Um, zines can incorporate a lot of different forms of art, including collage and poetry, writing, painting, printmaking, comics like Kels does. Um, and so really feel free to get started with whatever feels most comfortable for you. Um, if you're looking for more different examples or more information about how to get started or to get connected to other zinesters or to share your work, um, we have some resources to share with you linked in the description below. So thanks so much for watching. Uh, thanks to Kels for being here. Thanks um, for having me. Yeah, and happy zine making.